Guys are ready. Good morning, Unity of Greenville. How are you this morning? <laughs> hey, doing good. So glad to have you here in the house. The, the crowd is a little thin this morning, but there's a lot going on, you know, the post-holiday stuff and all. So, but we're so glad that you are here with us physically, and we're so glad that you are here joining us virtually. So I have a bit of an apology to make this morning. You know, in Unity, we believe that <clears throat> you create right when we when you send out your prayers and your thoughts and you create things but there's a very important part of that it's called specificity and it's about being specific about what you're creating about what you want and so forth and, and I've been asking for snow um, but I wasn't specific about where I wanted it <laughs> so my apologies to all the people up north that got all of the snow because my prayers and my wants were for, for that to have been here, or for at least some of it to have been here. So for all of you that got eight plus inches, I learned my lesson about specificity. So now my want for snow is here in Taylor's. And I'm sorry for all of you that live in Taylor's and don't want <laughs> snow. <laughs> so that's just kind of a... Just a little bit. Just, I just wanted just a little bit, uh, you know, but poor, poor people up north are really inundated with it and... Um, so our thoughts are with them as they're braving the cold and snow this morning. <clears throat> Every week I try to tell you a little bit of something uh, to be appreciative for. If you can't be appreciative for snow this morning, how about considering being appreciative for the fact that it's National Apricot Day? Mm. I love apricots. When I was a little girl, my grandmother used to have an apricot tree in her yard, and whenever I would go and visit, I would go home with bags of apricots. So I have very fond memories of apricots, and I really like them. So today is National Apricot Day. It is also National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, so we truly do appreciate all of our people that give themselves over to law, <clears throat> law enforcement. We're appreciative for that. And finally, it's Play God Day. <laughs> now, that sounds a little strange, but what that really means is find a way that if you were God for a day, and you kind of are, um, what would you do for someone? So it's really all about stepping out and doing a kindness for someone, playing God for the day. So those are some things that you can think about being appreciative for today. Works for me. How about you? And then finally... Our daily word for this morning, which we can also be appreciative for, is this idea of guidance. I know that I'm really appreciative for my inner guidance system. You know, that GPS, that, guide, that guiding positional system that we have internally that helps us know where to go, what to do, what to say, if we pay attention. So this morning's daily word, as we move into it, is about guidance. And I'm going to invite you to just take a couple of breaths and get comfortable in your space. And the affirmation, which you can say with me together if you'd like and is on the screen is, divine wisdom helps me discover my, my unique, unique spiritual, spiritual path. path. So tending to my spiritual life keeps me attentive to the whispers of my heart and in tune with my guidance. I am grateful for those moments I can rely upon my spiritual intuition to discern my path forward. Sometimes my guidance feels far away and hard for me to access on my own. At those times, I may seek the assistance of my trusted friends and advisors. I may seek the wise counsel of my minister or a spiritual counselor who encourages me to discover the wisdom found in the depths of my own consciousness. She, he, or they pray with me, listen with empathy, and share my joy as my innate wisdom leads me along my unique spiritual path. I am grateful for those who walk the path alongside me. And John 14, 26 reminds us, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So take that in. Being so thankful and grateful this morning for the inner guidance and the divine wisdom that we have. And with that, I'll turn it over to Reverend James. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. We really appreciate it. It's good to see you all. It's good to see you all virtually, wherever you're at in the world. We're glad that you're here. You know, technology is pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, we're here, there, and everywhere. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So, 
back in, remember 2020, anybody? 2020? <laughs> right. But 2020, right when we were in the middle of the pandemic, there was, uh, you know, you'd get ideas, you know, sometimes. And it's like, having plans sounds like a good idea until you have to put on clothes and leave the house. Remember that? You know, it's weird being the same age as old people. (laughs) Chocolate is God's way of telling us that he likes us a little bit chubby. Yeah. It's probably my it's probably my age that tricks people into thinking that I'm an adult. Did I go away? Hello? Am I still on? Oh, there we are. Ooh, there we are. Can you find somewhere in the middle there? <laughs> um never sing in the shower. Singing leads to dancing. Dancing leads to slipping. And slipping leads to paramedics seeing you naked. So remember, don't sing. (laughs) No, I believe that we should all be singing all the time, right? I believe in music. Yeah. All right, well, today I want to continue along the lines that we started last week on this idea of leadership and taking the lead in our world and in our lives. It's so important that we have spiritually mature people in places of leadership. Somebody say yes. Isn't that right? Isn't that what we need? People who have integrity, people who have values, people who are concerned about the other person in our world. And I think that that's what Jesus was teaching all along. And all the spiritual masters were teaching this common respect for each other, the common good. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end shall come. Say it with me. Ooh, sounds serious. The end, what is the end? Well, I believe that the gospel of good news is universal forgiveness. Would you agree? Jesus said, go and teach the forgiveness of sins. Give forgiveness to everyone. That's what he was teaching. It's a gospel of good news. Total, complete forgiveness for everybody. That's what the good news is. That's what the gospel is. And so once everybody has totally felt forgiven, for all the wrongs that we have done to each other, then the end comes. The end of what? The end of suffering. The end of suffering. That's the end that he was talking about. I wouldn't talk about the end of the planet or the end of, you know, of of people. He was talking about the end of suffering because it's our suffering that is causing all of our problems and our challenges. And we are constantly, as we walk through our world, we're bumping against each other. We're kind of, you know, striking out against each other. And it's because we're we're not at peace with ourselves. Isn't that the truth? And so there needs to be some forgiveness work, some self-forgiveness, some other forgiveness. And, And that is our calling. That is what we're here to do. And as spiritually minded people, You and I are here to teach others by being an example, by being a model of what forgiveness really is. And what is it? It's just whenever you can forgive and you have a choice, what do you do? How many understand that it really is up to you? That you and I take the lead by being the one to uh, bring forth peace and understanding and communication, and dialogue, and all of these things. That's our job. That's what we're here to do. You know, that's what preachers and apostles were sent forth to preach this universal forgiveness of everybody. That's what Jesus was talking about. So we could bring an end to the suffering. Because all of our suffering that we have in the world is simply because we're not mature enough 
spiritually, emotionally, we're just not mature enough. If you look around, you see the immaturity in our government. You see it in our leadership. You see it in the world. But we need people like you, people like me, all of us together doing our part to bring about the end of suffering. And that's our true mission when it gets right down to it, is to help alleviate the suffering in the world. And if you have lived your life and you have helped to alleviate suffering and the people around you, then you are fulfilling your true purpose. Make sense to anybody? All right. So preaching the good news is not about condemning people because they've made mistakes, but to forgive them and teach them to forgive others. This is how we bring about a, a, a new and improved world is by teaching forgiveness. See, if you know how to change your thinking or repent, the word repentance we talked about last week is the Greek word metanoia, meta change, noia, your mind, change your mind. That's what it means to repent. And that's what we're doing is we're constantly in a state of repentance or changing our thoughts, changing our way of thinking. Because it's not the outer world that's the problem. Jesus said it's the kingdom of God within you. It's the invisible traits, the invisible world, the invisible realm that is inside. It's our psychology that needs to be healed. Anybody here need a psychologist or a psychiatrist? I think we all do. <laughs> we need some spiritual psychology. And it just so happens that one of the words for healing that Jesus used is the idea of a, of a spiritual, psychological healing. You know, when you break it all down, that's what the word salvation is really about, this psychological healing right? It's not your ticket to heaven because, you know, and I say this sometimes and I get little tweets and people get back to me, but the truth of it is we're all going to heaven when we die. We're all going to the same place. Sorry. <laughs> You'll look around and go, hey, what are you doing here? And they'll look at you and say, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? Because it's not about that. It's not about that. It's a spiritual plane. You and I are spirits. Spirit, that's our natural state. That's where we all go, right? But the true salvation is a constant renewing of your thoughts and your mind to change your motivation, to change your action. That's what being saved is all about. It's a state of well-being. It's a state of wholeness. Are you getting this? Is this making sense to anybody? This is the good news. This is the good news. All the issues, the real issues of life are within us, aren't they? You can't see it with your outer eyes. You only see the result. That's why Jesus said it's like the wind, you know? You, you, you can't really see it, but you see its effects. And that's the way that spiritual energy is. So true spirituality is about doing the inner work to become free of what? Free of our negatively focused ego. Say it with me. Oh me. Oh my. Oh yeah. All right? So when we are unified, you know what? We can end poverty. We can create better conditions for ourselves and others. We can facilitate peace on earth. You know, in Romans chapter 8, it says, the whole creation is groaning and travailing, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, if you break that down, the word sons there is the Greek word weos, and you know what it means? A matured son or child of God. Now, in the Bible, it was written more toward the um, patriarchal guy, right? The male. But it's really all-inclusive because spirit is really no gender at all. Spirit is transgender, beyond gender. You, you hear what I'm saying? That's what spirit is. And so you and I 
are these spiritual beings and the sons of God that is talking about there are mature ones. There's another Greek word, and it's technon, and it means to be a baby spiritually, to be a baby, to be a newborn. It's where the idea of born again, you know, to be a newborn. See, you're born again in every single moment. Every time you take a breath, you're born again. Right? Every morning that you wake up, you're born again, again. <laughs> Every time you go through a, a, a situation where something changes about you, you're born again, again, and again, and again. You understand how this works? This is a process. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. And so as a spiritual community, we need vision. We need a clear vision so that we can see the most expanded picture of this divine purpose so that we will know where to focus our powerful intention to achieve the highest and best results. Are you with me so far? Are you? Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. You know, Reverend Michael Beckwith says that visioning is the process by which we train ourselves to be able to hear, feel, see, and catch God's plan for our lives. So based on that thought, that idea, that transformative ideas, how many like transformative ideas? Yeah, because when you, when you entertain those and you dwell on those and you contemplate these transformative ideas, it changes something, right? So we choose to develop <clears throat> a divinely tuned and expansive consciousness in order to grow. Realizing that the same church mentality we've had in the past, which has successfully gotten us to where we are now, to this point, will not adequately, adequately serve us as we continue to grow. I mean, no, it's true. Sometimes you have to change your modus operandi. Are you with me? Sometimes we have to change the way we do things to, to uh, figure out how that we can reach the most people. You know, it's like a, if you're in a relationship with somebody, every once in a while you kind of have to reinvent yourself. Isn't it true? reinvent the relationship and realize that maybe you've gotten stuck. Maybe you've gotten into a pattern and, and maybe life is no longer fresh and new. You're not being born again <laughs> in, a, in a new and fresh way every day in your relationship. And so it takes some change and that's the same way with a spiritual community because we can get stagnant real easy. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Back when we first came to Unity of Greenville, there, it was different. It was very different. There was a small group of people, like 12. And so we started meeting in a little office space. And there were certain things that were going on that, <clears throat> from my perspective as an outsider, needed to change. So... <clears throat> that was my responsibility to bring that vision to the people. But what I discovered is that there was some animosity. There was some strife. There was some bickering. There was some accusations, blaming. And there were things going on, you know. And there was a lot of good things, too, and a lot of good things. But there were some things that needed to be worked through. There, there was a, some universal forgiveness that needed to happen between people. And so people would come to me and say, well, remember what, what was going on three years ago? I said, no, I wasn't here then. I say, oh, okay. And so I would just redirect people's focus away from the past and focus it on right now. And a little bit at a time, we started doing things a little differently. A little bit at a time, there was growth. And in about six months, we went from 12 people to 75 people, you know? And 
the room only seated 50 people. So how many were here? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You too. <laughs> Just two of you were here. So <clears throat> it was quite interesting. And so we learned as we went along. And so we started to work with uh, different folks. I remember that one day somebody came to me and said, there's, there's, James, there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. Now, I was the only one. <laughs> I, was the, that was the, I was the volunteer. I was everything. You know, I swept the floors and picked everything up and moved everything around, positioned the chairs. You know, on Sunday mornings, I'd put on the microphone and then I'd run back to the sound booth and turn on the cassette player and adjust the volume. And I'd say, can you hear me now? You know, <laughs> and adjusted it. And then I'd run back up front and give the talk and at the end, you know, it would go off and you know, it, it was just a lot to do. And so I started doing what Charles Fillmore said that we should do. And that is, uh, one day Charles was uh, uh, at home and he had a man who came to him, John, I uh, can't remember his name. Anyway, he came to Charles and he said, listen, he said, I really think that, that you need to put out a, a magazine. And you need to create some affirmations. And you need to put out this magazine so that, we, so that it would be a blessing to people. And Charles Fillmore looked at that, pointed his finger at him and said, well, it's interesting how you have this idea. Maybe you should do it. <laughs> and so that's how we got the Daily Word, right? That's how the Daily Word came about. And so the same way with this person, you know, I, I asked him, I said, well, you know, I said, it would, it would really be helpful. You know, we don't have anybody to stock the bathroom. I said, would you mind on Sunday to come by? I said, you really seem to be a person who, who cares about, you know, this particular. And I said, we really need somebody to stock the bathroom and to make sure that it's clean on Sundays. W would you mind to do that? Said, oh, of course I can do that. I would love to do that. And that person took it over. And so that's what we did. We just worked with people. You know, people would come up and say, well, well, how come we don't have this? And I say, well, would you like to help with that? They say, well, I can't do it. I said, yeah, but maybe you have some friends. You know, you could talk to others. And let's put something together. And they would work with other people. And little by little, you know, we started having, uh, you know, various positions that were filled that we needed. And so, but, you know, it, it's... It's, a, it's the kind of thing that you have to speak to people in a, in a way that is uh, um, communicative, right? And that you are communicating exactly what is needed. And uh, I always believe whenever you come to me and you have an idea, guess what I'm going to say? <laughs> right? <laughs> Check, tell the person next to you, point to him and say, he's talking about you. <clears throat> so the next step, what is the next step for our community here? Involves changing or updating our approach to how we most effectively do the work of the ministry. How can we effectively do what we do? See, there are ways to do things that are hard, <laughs> that are laborious, that, that just drain the life out of you, right? Why do we do that? Because some people have this belief that the harder you work, that maybe you're going to please somebody because you're showing them you're really working hard for Jesus, right? And that's not what it's about. We're not trying to show off to anybody We're, we just want to streamline things and how do we get from point a to point b how do we do it how do we do it well we've got to be open we've got to be what creative creative there are creative ways to do things that you have never even thought about before right if you're open to it you can receive these divine ideas isn't that what we teach in unity Receiving divine ideas. There are ways to do things that we haven't even discovered yet. Remember the uh, horse and buggy days? 
and somebody came out with this motorized thing. Oh my goodness, that's never going to work, right? Gasoline engines, you've got to be kidding me. And guess what? Now we're at the stage where we're saying, wait a minute, maybe there's electrical. Maybe there's electric cars. Maybe there's even a solar car that we can drive. Oh, that'll never work. There's always naysayers. How many know there's always people that say, no, that won't work? And why do they do that? They do that because they don't want change. <laughs> say it with me. I'm all about the change. As long as it works, I'm all about the change, right? Sometimes we just change the, you know, all of the, the, the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> thinking, oh, That'll fix it, right? How many know that sometimes changing the deck chairs is not going to uh, resolve anything? We need active listening. Active listening. What is active listening? It's different than just listening. Most people are not really paying attention. (laughs) I don't know if you knew that. Isn't it true? People just don't pay attention. But we need active listeners. You know, actively listening in the moment. And that's the way our meditations need to be. Active listening. Because there's this creative power inside of each and every one of us that wants to talk to us, that wants to guide us, that wants to show us how to, how to get from point A to B in our lives in the most streamlined, the most powerful, the most effective way. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? It's there. It really is. So we need new understanding because it's constantly being poured out. How many understand that things are different than they were 20 years ago? We didn't have iPhones 20 years ago, did we? But how many can even now, it's like, I can't imagine not having a phone in my pocket. I can't imagine not having a device You know, that I can Google and ask questions whenever I want to, right? So we need this new understanding. It's constantly being poured out. And every Unity Church is different. Every Unity Church has its own calling, right? So our gifts and talents have to do with all of us together. We're not all going to, all Unity Churches are not the same. Because we all have different gifts and talents. So there's areas that we are going to be good at, that we are going to be focused in, that are part of our particular mission right here, right now. Okay? Might be a little different than another Unity Church. Let's say it together. That's okay. Because if we need something, we just pray them in. (laughs) Right? We pray in the people who can embody that, who can do that. Who can serve in that way? Make sense? So we have to follow our own unique pathway as it unfolds before us. As it unfolds before us. Proverbs 3, 5 says, To trust, to trust, to fully yield to the divine order. How many understand there is a divine order? There is a way to do things is so much better than the negatively focused ego, right? Trust in the Lord, in the higher mind, the higher principle. With all of your heart, what what is your heart? It's your affections, it's your desires. And lean not to your own understanding or human logic. And the divine will give you the desires of your heart what you're thinking on, what you're meditating on, what you're contemplating, will give you those. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight, find great joy in the Lord, the higher mind, and the higher mind will direct your paths. Got any takers here this morning? Got any takers? Yeah. So you might say, well, James, why why do we even want a bigger church anyway? I'll be honest with you, a larger church can be a headache. It can. 
because there's more stuff that has to be done. When we were fully operational with two services every Sunday and, and our youth education department was going on and we had volunteers, it took like, you know, 25, 30 volunteers just to make sure that one service was going and everything was done. Isn't that amazing? It takes a lot of volunteers. It really does. So a larger church can be a headache. It can be a lot of work. That's why we need to have the right kind of attitude. We need to develop universal forgiveness for each other, for our shortcomings and for our mistakes and for our personality flaws and defects. And I know that nobody in this room has those, right? Am I right? Sure. Yeah. But we all do. And we're not even aware of most of them. See, we're blind to the areas that we are falling short of the full maturity and the stature of the Christ nature. Are you with me? So don't allow yourself to be deceived into thinking it's always their fault. Sometimes it is. But even then, we have to extend forgiveness, don't we? Because if, if we want to be able to grow and to change and to transform our world and our society, then we've got to have people who are willing to work together, to take hold of a hand, even somebody that forgot to shake it last week. I've seen people get upset, you know, seething. And I said, what, what's, what's wrong? Well, so-and-so just totally ignored me. I said, yeah. I said, I wonder what so-and-so has on their mind. And, she, and I said, go talk to them because they've got a challenge going on in their life right now where they need you more than you need them. Right? Isn't it the truth? So a larger church can greatly affect the consciousness of our community and the world and have a positive impact. One of the goals of our spiritual community is to affect consciousness in a transformative way. Our commitment to the world is a commitment to ourselves first, and then as we become more in, uh, a more enlightened vessel for spirit to flow through, we will enrich the lives of those that choose to journey with us. How many understand we're not here to make people come or to trick people into coming? I believe that there is a spiritual process that is working in people's lives that they are drawn by the spirit within them. They're drawn to be a part because they're ready to step into a particular way of being in the world at this time. I believe in that. I've seen it happen so many times. People tell me how they came to unity, and it's like, I don't know why I'm here. I'm just here this morning. I've never been to church in my life. I said, well, good. I said, you're at the right place now. You're, you're supposed to be here. But I believe that growth is a positive goal and keeps us from stagnation and self-absorption. A lot of churches, a lot of churches. that are There are more churches that are less than 50 people than there are that are more than 50 people. Isn't that amazing? Now why is that? Because we're only, you know, interested sometimes, not in every case, but sometimes in our own stuff. And because we're so self-absorbed, we block and keep other people from coming in. I mean, no, we have to have an expansive attitude, right? We have to be looking for people. And it's like Jesus, you know, he would wander around. He would walk around and then he would end up at the, at the well and he would sit down and there would be a, a young lady there who was having some real big challenges. And they would get into a conversation. And he would share with them and enlighten them. And they, they were ready because Spirit had brought them to that point. Spirit had brought them to that point for a definite reason, to change their lives. And if you will embody it, if you will accept it, you are also the Christ. You are also the Christ. 
And sometimes you end up sitting at the well. It might be called Starbucks. And you're sitting there. Somebody comes and they sit down beside you with their latte. And here you are on your device, not really paying attention. Right? But maybe there's a reason. Maybe they'll strike. This has happened to me so many times. You know, our first priority as a ministry, as a spiritual community, is to give people spiritual food and assist them with their spiritual growth. That is our main priority. That's the first priority. Everything else is secondary. Because when people are spiritually fed and nourished, they become part of the attracting force of our spiritual community and our purpose in the world. Wow. Take a deep breath with me, would you? Whew. I put out a lot of stuff on you this morning. There's a lot to think about. Because here we are. We're living in a new era where things are different now. And so what do we do? Do we fight against it? Or we say, okay, what's the highest and best good for now? How can we reach online, reach out to others? Well, you know, we need people who are running camera. We need people who are doing the soundboard. We need people who are helping us, you know, with the stage decorations and with the, you know, not just the people that are coming in here, but we need ushers and greeters of the people that are watching online. Because here's the thing, we could have a thousand people watching us online. Wouldn't that be amazing? Where we can be helping and to transform their lives in a positive way, making a difference in the world. And every one of those is another rock in the pond, aren't they? And when they throw their little pebble in the pond, the ripple goes out. The ripple goes out. So you make a difference. You are one of those pebbles. You are one of those rocks. Say it with me. I rock. You know you do. Right? Oh, my goodness. So my point, do you, do you know what my point is today? There's a lot of different points in there, wasn't there? That's the idea of teaching, that it gives you things to chew on, to begin to uh, work with. And I know that it's important to chew your food many times, right? And to keep chewing, chewing, chewing until it becomes digestible. And that's what you have to do with these thoughts, these divine ideas. You have to chew on them for a while, contemplate. Feel them. Allow them to become a part of who you are when? Right now. Because I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm not even the same person I was 10 minutes ago. Because there's more that's been added to me. My consciousness has been growing and changing and evolving. Just, and our Collective consciousness is changing, isn't it? So we can make a difference in the world. And all you have to do is just do your part. Does that make sense? Do your part. So as we prepare for our meditation, we're going to turn down the lights here. And wherever you're at, I just invite you to go inside. Take in a good breath. Relaxing. Just breathing. And this morning we want to pray for the highest good. Let's pray for the highest good for everyone. For all of us, let's pray for the highest good. For everyone, for all of us, let's pray for the 
that's been Let's pray I pray for the highest good for everyone, for all of us, I pray for the highest good for everyone, for all of us, I pray I invite you now to go to your sacred space inside. That space inside yourself that is total peace and rest. Allow yourself to let go of everything that has come before this moment and just be. Just be with this moment as it shows up. For there are divine secrets that are swirling around your head right now. Divine ideas. And when you're open, you can see them and catch them, capture them, and bring them into your life. And begin to know what you need to do now. What's important now? We start, first of all, with our own lives. What is it you really need? What is it that you really want? If you can make peace with that, you can heal that part of yourself that's always longing longing to belong. Make peace with that part of yourself. Let us call in divine order. Let us see that everything already is working for my highest good. And all I have to do is yield, surrender, allow, and listen actively to that spirit voice inside my own being. For there is sacred communion, communion of the soul, that you can experience right here, right now. And it is beautiful. And it's always for your highest good. 
So now that we've got that settled, let us pray this morning for the highest good for our community, for each and every one. May we all experience the high height and the depth, the length and the breadth of that divine love and acceptance. Let us share that universal forgiveness and the peacemaking abilities that we have inside of ourselves. That we can make a difference positive difference in people's lives. And so we commit now this spiritual community as a haven of peace, a haven of rest, a safe place to be, to grow, to change, to transform. We declare it to be so. And so now we pray, we extend our prayers out to the world, out to our families, our friends, our loved ones. Let us reach out to them now, sending them our love and our peace. Sending them peace. May you be well, may you be whole. May you find your purpose, dear one. So now we extend out a little further into our United States of America. We, we love you. We embrace you. We hold you in this moment. We see you finding your place and well-being. The healing between all the citizens. the healing, spiritual, psychological healing of our citizenry. And we are grateful. We are grateful. We send our prayers out to the whole world, to all people everywhere. We call forth divine order. We're open to change. We're open to the newness of that spiritual energy raising us up, bringing healing and peace to the world. We see it, we envision it, we hold that vision within ourselves. We trust in the higher power, the higher mind, to bring it about. And we are grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so now, I invite you to practice your active listening as we go within the stillness for just a moment.
Oh, divine spirit that fills all things, we give you thanks today. So it is. I invite you to reach and stretch, bringing back all that good divine information. You're going to carry it with you throughout this day and throughout this week. Mm. And so it is. All right. Beautiful. How many feel better now? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. If we have anybody who is uh, here or online that's watching us and you'd like to be, you'd like to find out more information about unity and our beliefs, and we've kind of been sharing that a little bit in the last few weeks, and we, we're going to continue to do that. We're going to get into the five principles starting next week, the five principles of unity. And, uh, but if you would like to be a member and you feel like that this fits you, fits you where you're at in your spiritual evolution, then I want to invite you to a class this Tuesday at 6.30. It's an online class, a Zoom class. It's for anyone who's interested in becoming a member of Unity. And it's painless, and you can ask any questions that you want. We'll talk about anything that you want to talk about, and we'll just share a little bit. And... Uh, you know, share with you what unity is about. And, and, and the key to understand, it is, it is a presence. It is a presence. It is the presence of God. That's what it is in reality. That's what it really always has been. It's not just, you know, what do we believe? What do you believe about this? What you, you know, those are, those are great. We have fun with that. It's like the bubble gum you get to chew, you know, as you go through life. But it's really about Awakening that spiritual presence within you and achieving, you know, some state of well-being so that you can be an effective model and healer in this world. That's what it's all about. Anyway, so I already told you what you're going to be hearing about, but come on out and uh, you, can, you can do that by going to the website. That's on Tuesday? That's Tuesday. At what time? 6.30. Aha, uh -huh. Tuesday at 6.30. 6.30, did I say 6.30? You did, 6.30. Did I say, are, Tuesday at 6.30. You, people out there, are you writing this down? <laughs> 6.30 on Tuesday, don't miss it. Just go to the website. What are you going to find on the website, Leah? On the very front page, you'll find a link to the Zoom meeting yes. for that that's happening at 6.30. Yes. If you go the night before on Monday, you'll find a different Zoom link, but it won't be on the front page. It'll be on the events page, and that's right. for the... Um, group that Reverend David Torres. Oh, that's is right. That yeah, why don't you tell night. us about that? 
Um, all I can tell you is that it's about purpose. Purpose. So if you're wondering about your purpose, I think it might have the word passion in it, although I'm not sure and about it is that. And it is a unity class. It is a Unity Worldwide Ministries class. Uh, Reverend David has facilitated this particular one on several occasions and has found it to be quite thought-provoking and fun and engaging. Right. So it's via Zoom. Anybody can participate. But the link is so that's already, Monday night that's at tomorrow 6 night, o'clock. Monday night. Oh, my. Yeah. 6 o'clock Monday. And the can link you remember is, this? And the link of is course all, you can. <laughs> and the link is already... <laughs> And the link is there. already there for that one. But on there the will be page. another link there that will be, will be for link. the class Tuesday for the at six thirty. So join me. So you have things to do Monday okay. night and Tuesday night on yeah. Zoom. And and even if you're already a member and you just want to kind of be there just to kind of see what's going on, you you know feel free to join yeah. us and to be there and to contribute because that's what it's all about. You know, it's not about one or two or three people. It's about us. You know. It's us. It's us together. And we are the spiritual community. So Monday night at 6, Tuesday night at 6.30. Purpose on Monday, new orientation on Tuesday. All right. We're going to zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. So anything else? That's all I've got, other than if you have been blessed this morning or on any other occasion by Unity and you'd like to support us financially, we appreciate that. And you can do so if you're present here in the building by putting your offering in the baskets in the back or in that big box in the corner. You can do that as well. And if you're online and you'd like to donate, you can do that through the website. There's a, there's a donate button there that you, can, that you can use. And you can also text give. So some people like to do that. I find that to be a really convenient way to just hop on my phone and do that. And we're set up for that. You can do that as well. However you choose to do it, we appreciate it so much. We're just glad that you do it. Yes. <laughs> Say it's amen, somebody. What keeps come us yeah. here. And it's so helpful when you, when you come up with a, uh, an amount that you can do on a regular basis. Because then we know what we can count on. Right? So, and that's important. And the board appreciates it. We appreciate it. The leadership appreciates it appreciates it. Everybody in this room appreciates it because that's why we have this wonderful heat and air conditioning in this building and 14 acres of just a retreat. If you haven't been out to the pond, my goodness, go out there yeah. and walk around and sit on a, the bench of faith or the bench of imagination and just allow yourself to connect with nature. It's good for you. Say it with me. It's good for you. Yep, you may spot a blue heron while you're out there. That's and right. You purchase yeah. on the edges of the pond every once in a while. You'll probably see some whatever some those turtles fish are that swim out in the pond that look like sharks, but they're not. They have the big fins on top. <laughs> I don't know. Are they really? Are they really? I don't Maybe know, you should go there. look. You might see a cat or two. You might see a fox. There's been lots of things uh, spotted on the property. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's all stand together. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's say together. The, the light, light of God, God surrounds, surrounds us. The, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. us. And the, the presence of God, God watches over us. For wherever, wherever we are, God is, and, and all is the Allah is the well All right. <laughs> Let's give yourselves a hand this morning. Thank you so much. All right. God bless.